Hi, it's Jan Beta and it's time for another Amiga video today. You probably remember me teasing the A600 version of the RGB to HDMI mod that you can do to your Amigas. I think I mentioned that in both my Amiga 500 RGB to HDMI videos. And apparently I got contacted recently by Joachim and also by Klaus, uh, who are very active in the A1K forums. And they came up with a very elegant solution for the Amiga 600. Of course, uh, the original RGB to HDMI adapter that was made by Copper Dragon uh, has a socket for the dip versions of the Denise graphics chips in the Amigas and the newer Amiga models like the Amiga 600 have PLCC chips for the Denise graphics chip so it's a bit difficult to fit that on there and there were some workaround solutions that used basically loose wires coming from the Denise socket and uh, things like that but Joachim, inspired by Klaus, I think, uh, if I got that correctly, came up with a very elegant solution that I'm going to show you in this video. So stick around if you're interested in seeing that. So I have my Amiga 600 set up here uh, with my cheap upscaler that I tend to use for testing and things like that. It's not good for anything else, basically. I made a video about this thing, uh, the Flylink, a uh, very inexpensive upscaler, but it's not very good for anything but just uh, quickly testing machines and having a picture output on an HDMI screen, which this is. This is an old television screen. And yeah, now I got all the components to mod this with a native HDMI output. If you're not familiar with the project, I'm not going to go in depth about the whole RGB to HDMI project. I made videos about this and uh, there are also going to be links in the video description down below where you can find details about the projects. Basically what it does is uh, use a Raspberry Pi Zero, so the smallest version of the Raspberry Pi, and uses that to generate a full HD output from the original chipset Denise chips as well as the enhanced chipset Denise chips. The Amiga 600 has an ECS Denise and this has a PLCC chip so we need a PLCC socket to sit on top of the chip to get the signals from there to be able to feed them into the Pi and the software is doing its magic and outputting an HDMI picture. So I'm going to install this in the Amiga 600 today and we're going to see. And this should be a very elegant way of permanently installing this into your A600. So in order to have an HDMI socket in the rear part of the A600, we are going to remove the RF modulator. Both the Amiga 600 and the Amiga 1200 came with uh, RF modulators on board for whatever reason really, probably to be able to hook them up kind of like a gaming console or something to a TV. But yeah, of course they have the RGB out, which is pretty decent, but for modern times, uh, native HDMI output is really handy to just quickly hook this up to a monitor. So we are removing the old school way of hooking this up in your living room and basically putting the modern way into this. <laughs> And uh, actually that's probably what I'm going to do with this Amiga 600, just hook it up in the living room and be able to play some quick games on the big TV. So yeah, let's go. We have to open this up of course and desolder the whole RF modulator business. But that's going to be the most difficult step in this whole process. The other stuff should pretty much be plug and play. Yeah, this has three screws here and then the case is clipped together rather in a rather peculiar way. I hope I don't damage anything. This was a bit uh, damaged when I got it and I already fixed the case in one of my previous videos that I'm going to link in the corner and in the video description, I guess. And the rest is clipped. And uh, to remove the keyboard ribbon cable and the LED assembly cable. 
So you probably couldn't see that. Um, just going to show this without the cable. Uh, this is the connector for the keyboard ribbon and it's very short so yeah the angle wasn't perfect on my camera there so you couldn't see it. Um, you basically lift up this part and then you can just pull the cable out and uh, if you push this down it locks in place again. So we are going to remove the RF modulator and I think we also have to take out the whole uh, this drive assembly here to get to the board. We have to take out the whole board obviously because we want to work on the RF modulator from the back side of the board to desolder it. So yeah the RF modulator is not really needed for anything else other than uh, modulating an RF signal. It's not, not a huge loss these days to it, it wasn't really back in the day because most people I knew at least uh, used this with a proper monitor. So uh, in order to get the disk drive out we have to remove these screws from the back side as well. And by the way uh, I did some retro brighting on this and it still looks absolutely perfect so that worked. That was a while ago already so yeah. As I always say with retro brighting your mileage may vary usually the yellowing returns at some point but uh, in this case it held up pretty nicely until now. I'm not sure if it's ever going to return. It wasn't that bad for this uh, particular machine but some machines it's worse than on others. Okay now we have this out. Let's do this step by step. So that's our circuit board loose I think and it's yeah it's in here in rather peculiar way you have to basically finagle it loose a bit and then you can just pull it out to the side. Yeah and indeed we have to remove all these screws from the uh, back connectors here. There we go. Okay that's our board freed. So okay this portion here is where our RF modulator sits and I think we have to desolder these three points here and these uh, I think ground lugs. I'm just going to add some fresh solder here so uh, that's going to make things a lot easier because we add some fresh flux with the fresh solder. So that's not that trivial. I'm just going to use some solar wick here. Try and get it all off. And it's also, of course, this is uh, connected to the ground layer of the circuit board. So there's a lot of uh, copper that you have to heat up in order to get the solar out of that. I'm just applying some pressure here and slowly <laughs> we're getting somewhere. There we go. Okay, that should be it, I guess. Ah, okay. Ow! Hot air is hot, apparently. <laughs> there we go. That went rather smoothly. Yeah, uh, we have successfully removed the RF modulator, which is still quite hot because of the hot air. Uh, but we got it out in one piece and the PCB didn't get damaged. I'm going to remove the solder, the remaining solder from these uh, vias here. We are apparently going to use these two to screw down a little mounting plate that Joachim uh, cut from acrylic. But yeah, I'm going to show you when the time comes. This was pretty difficult to desolder because basically it's all ground plates apart from the three little contacts with the board there. In case you were wondering, this Amiga 600 uh, works really well. I know I did a couple of videos and there's probably going to be more about this gradually upgrading it with all kinds of neat little features, I guess. So this is a little mounting plate that Joachim actually uh, cut from a piece of acrylic. This should fit the spot where our RF modulator was. 
And then we put this piece in there, which is an HDMI socket, standard size. And then this is going to connect with a flat flex cable to this little thing, which is a mini HDMI plug that has a connector for a flat flex cable. I'm going to put links to all of these parts in the video description. And hopefully, yeah, this is going to mount nicely. This is going to be screwed in from the bottom. So we're going to fit this first. I think with the adapter already put on there. Yeah, this just has some double-sided, double-stick tape on the back here, so... Yeah, and it's a perfect, it's a more than perfect fit. And then the whole thing is just going to live here and you're going to be able to plug in the standard HDMI cable into your Amiga 600. And these screws, of course, uh, that Joachim pro provided fit perfectly. Yeah, and they are not protruding too much. Yeah, so this sits in here really nicely now. The first thing I want to do is to put the uh, shielding back on because we have to mount the Raspberry Pi and the actual uh, RGB to HDMI adapter in the case. And then I'm going to slide it back into the bottom case, I think, because we don't need to access anything on the bottom of the board anymore. There we go. And as you can see, our HDMI port lines up nicely, so we should be able to fit any, even the bigger HDMI connectors in there. That's nice. It still says RF modulator, but yeah, <laughs> it isn't. Now, the rest of the stuff we need, apart from the Raspberry Pi, should be in this bag. And this, uh, you can actually have these circuit boards made. This is all openly available on GitHub. It's uh, a version of the RGB to HDMI board pretty similar to what we've seen with the other versions I've shown on this channel already. But yeah, it's designed to have a flat flex cable coming out here and this uh, PLCC socket that plugs on top of the Denise chip actually in the Amiga 600. And uh, yeah, these RGB to HDMI boards still only work for the ECS chipsets and the OCS chipsets. So you can't put them in your Amiga 1200 or 4000. We're stuck with the OCS screen modes, basically. The ECS screen modes somewhat work, but uh, not perfectly. So the OCS screens are what we're going to be able to view in full HD. As I mentioned, the PCBs for this project are readily available on Joachim's GitHub page. And in case you want to make your own, I recommend the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, who happen to manufacture prototype PCBs of all kinds. And they can also populate your surface mount components for you. I'm going to put a link in the video description and you can just upload the Gerber files you can download from the GitHub page to PCBWay's website and order a number of PCBs. They're really friendly people with uh, high quality PCBs, excellent service, and really fast turnaround times, so I highly recommend checking them out. The link is in the video description. Let's continue with this build. Yeah, the Denise chip is located here, quite conveniently. And I think this should just sit like so on top here. It's a pretty tight fit, of course. Push it down quite a bit so it sits perfectly. Yeah, but that should be it. And then uh, the actual Pi and the rest of the thing have to be attached somewhere like here and we have to probably you could obviously add some holes there and screw them down but there's not a lot of room i don't know i'm not sure I, i'm just probably going to stick them down with some double-sided tape these pins on the back side have all been cut short so you can actually do that and of course you have to plug a raspberry pi on top here and it also has the connectors for adding a push button to access <coughs> the menus in the software for the RGB to HDMI. And of course, we have to make a connection from the Raspberry Pi HDMI out to 
our little socket here. So I actually had to get another Pi because I was running out of Raspberry Pi Zeros because there's just too many projects. This should just plug in like so. Yeah, and then we have our little Raspberry Pi sandwich. Uh, the power the Raspberry Pi uses is actually derived from the Denise chip here, so that shouldn't be an issue. It's uh, not very power hungry, so yeah. These locking mechanisms work similar to the keyboard locking mechanism here, in that there's a little bracket that you can lift. That's the black part here and the white part is the actual connector. You lift that and you can remove or insert the cables and then you uh, push it down gently. You always want to be very gentle around flat flex cables because they easily break. So yeah, this is going to be rather cramped. I'm going to temporarily remove my SD card assembly here. And now we have to plug a cable in here, which Joachim actually, he provided everything in the kit, which is really nice. Thank you so much. Uh, these are readily available parts from various Raspberry Pi uh, resellers. This came from Berry Base, which is a, it's very well known in Germany. And this goes into the HDMI out on the Pi. Okay, so this has a similar little black bracket and uh, I guess it should go in like this. And then we push down the bracket and it should lock in place. I am now going to plug this into the Pi and then into our uh, socket. Yeah, the other end uh, should just plug into our HDMI PCB here. It's easier said than done because there's a little room. I think I might have just broken the little adapter board. I broke off one of the, uh, uh, one of the ends of the little retaining clip there. But it still locks in place and hopefully it's still going to contact the contacts there, otherwise I have to buy a new uh, HDMI thing. Uh, let's install the software and see if we get any output. So of course the Raspberry Pi needs some software to handle the hardware that's now attached to it. So I'm going to download the RGB to HDMI software compatible with the Amiga uh, from the GitHub page of Hoglet67. I've already shown how to do this. Basically you just download the, the archive and put it on the uh, SD card. And this should contain everything we need. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, we should just uh, copy these over to the root of our SD card. And we probably should be good to go. We're going to find out soon. And this is a 24 megabytes installation, so you don't need a hilariously huge SD card for this. Micro SD, of course. <laughs> so that should be the installation done. I think this should be compatible with this board right from the get-go. And obviously the micro SD card goes into the micro SD slot on the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to attach an HDMI cable, which I haven't prepared and I'm going to need one. So yeah, let me look for an HDMI cable. <laughs> okay, found one. Let's see if this fits in here. And yeah, let's power it on and see what it does. And we're not getting anything. That's not very convenient. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I might have broken the little connector on the uh, flat flex cable for the HDMI socket there. Now it does work and it looks amazing. <laughs> I have connected my uh, HDMI directly now. So I think uh, breaking off the little tab on the HDMI uh, socket here didn't do any good. Kind of broke that I think. Now I connected a mini HDMI to regular size HDMI cable directly to the Pi and we get a picture output and it's really, really crisp. My bad. I messed that thing up, I guess. Sorry about that. But as you can see, uh, the whole thing just works. Um, we don't have a drive in there. That's why it's displaying the question marks for DFO. Yeah. 
But this absolutely and utterly works. And I can't see any interference or anything like that, uh, which was something we had with the other Amigas, like flashing lines from time to time. The Pi I used for this is a newer version. There's actually two versions of the Raspberry Pi Zero. There's an older version, that was the one I used in the previous videos, and this one is actually one I ordered just a week ago or something like that. And this is a slightly updated version, so it might be that this bears better results with the RGB to HDMI thing. The other thing worked, but it had some flashing lines from time to time. Uh, and also on the Amiga 2000, uh, it had some issues with overclocking. It didn't work quite as expected. I couldn't overclock it as much as I wanted it. But this thing works very well, it seems. That's nice. Okay. Now I know at least that the, the Pi portion of it works and the adapter itself works. Yeah, but as you know, this wouldn't be a good Jan Beta video if it weren't for some some kind of setback <laughs> at some point. Such a bummer. Okay, I failed. Um, yeah, this little retainer completely broke loose now and I crumbled to bits basically. I think the issue is that this uh, acrylic part is a tiny bit higher than where the little clip wants to travel in this uh, adapter board and yeah that's why it didn't come out easily when I wanted to plug the cable in and I didn't think of that and uh, broke it off. And now it's completely crumbled and this has no chance of making good contact anymore. I'm sorry about that, but in theory you've seen this, you've seen this work. <laughs> we can of course just uh, run the cable out of that hole there. Of course you could use another standard HDMI cable and uh, put it in here, but the flat, flat flex idea is rather nice. So yeah, I'm definitely going to get a new one of these and uh, put that in there. For now, we're stuck with the other cable. Hmm, too bad. I'm sorry. But I at least want to check if uh, the top half of the casing fits on here. If we just stick this down with some double-sided tape. Okay. That's not bad, actually. This is just a test fit. I'm definitely not going to close this up fully. Should totally work. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. Totally fits. Yeah, the only issue, <laughs> of course, as you've seen, is that uh, I broke the connector here. So we can't really use it as it's supposed to be used. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to leave this open and uh, plug in my bigger cable here. This is my workaround now, for now. I'm just going to run the cable directly from the Pi. And of course, you can just use a short uh, mini HDMI to HDMI socket cable and put it somewhere here. Or you can just run a cable out of some uh, little hole out of the case or something like that. Your imagination is the limit, basically. This is a beautiful way of getting HDMI out for your Amiga 600. Unfortunately, I messed it up a bit, but uh, you saw the point of this whole thing, I guess, and I'm probably going to make a little follow-up video as soon as I have the part and replace this. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, other than that, uh, this works really nicely and there's no issues whatsoever with the picture quality. I tested some games and stuff and uh, we don't have sound because I don't have anything connected. Uh, to the RCA outputs on the back here. Uh, the sound is not provided through the HDMI. That's still a thing that's uh, not possible with the standard setup of the RGB to HDMI. But uh, you get a lag-free HDMI picture, which is very much worth it for the Amigas and for connecting these. Oh, there goes my double-sided tape. 
<laughs> I think it works better if you have the top case on there and maybe put a little sponge on there to hold it down or something. Uh, this cable also puts a bit of strain on the circuit boards there. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm sorry that I failed with the little adapter board there, but it's a beautiful thing to put in your Amiga 600 and maybe this inspires you to do something similar. I think there's also some other projects for the Amiga 600, but this one is a particularly elegant way of uh, putting the RGB to HDMI mod in here. And yeah, works beautifully. I like it a lot. Thanks for sending this again, and uh, thanks to Katrina again, who donated this Amiga 600 in the first place. Thanks to Achim, thanks Klaus, and thanks everybody for watching. And special thanks to everybody who gives me some support on Patreon or on the channel memberships page. Highly appreciated and needed, actually. So uh, thank you all very much. I hope to see you on this channel again. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.